What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart. Today, I'll be breaking down this Thursday night football game here on DraftKings. We have the Giants. We have the 49ers. Million dollars up top to first place. So let's take that down. One of you guys, one of me, maybe we split it. Hey, let's get that money. I'll be breaking it down, going over my favorite plays, some core plays, building out a potential lineup for you guys. We're talking through the slate to kind of help you guys prepare for it tomorrow night. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Turn that notification bell and let's get into it, fellas. Before we get into the breakdown, guys, just want to take a look at the spread and game total. So we'll go to that. Ten and a half point spread, 44 game total, which is surprising because the injury news uh, right now, the big news is that Saquon is out and then Brandon Ayuk did not practice and is questionable. So that's the two big uh, injury news pieces for this slate here for uh, tomorrow's Thursday night game. Uh, but before we get into that, let's just take a look at the snap count percentage here. For the Giants, and then we'll do the same for the 49ers. So we get a little bit more, uh, a better sense of, you know, who we should look to, who we're going to target, who's been playing what for this slate. So obviously you don't have to worry about Daniel Jones, plays the whole game. Uh, but the big news, as I said, Saquon is out. So Matt Breida will be the starter. He only played 3% in that last game, and same thing as Gary Brightwell. He will be running back two. So Matt Breida, running back one. Gary Brightwell, running back two. Um, I, I would assume it's going to be probably 50-50 split, if not. 60-40. I don't know if they'd play Brita 70-30. You know, that's kind of the the risk there. We'll, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm, it just, it's hard not to believe that they won't mix in Brightwell. Uh, but if we take a look here at Matt Brito, this is from last year. Saquon did not play that last game of the season against Philadelphia. Uh, obviously a very great defense. And Brito went for, you know, he got four carries for 28 yards, and then he did get eight targets out of the backfield. But it was only seven for eight for 12 yards. So extremely extremely inefficient but seeing that many targets like he is a threat out of the backfield you know he will get targets i don't know if we can expect obviously eight but i'd say at least a couple you know two to four targets out of the backfield probably see 10 maybe around 10 rushes uh but yeah they're gonna have to change up the whole game plan but brita is an okay option here for, for tomorrow but i do expect him to mix in gary brightwell for the wide receiver situation as we can see week one obviously you got to throw that game away they lost by 40 uh, it just was god awful from the start. But if we look at week two, uh, you know, Slayton, 82%, Hodgins, 75, Paris Campbell, 66. So that's kind of wide receiver one, two, and three right there. And then Hyatt, snaps went down, only played 21%. And then Sterling Shepard, same thing, played about 15%. For a tight end situation, uh, 90% for Darren Waller in game two there. Was battling a little bit of an injury there, game one. He still has it, you know, it's like a nerve issue with his hamstring, but 90% is what you'd love to see there for the second game. 41% for Bellinger. So, you know, Bellinger, they will do double tight end sets there. So maybe they do a little bit more, not that Saquon's out and they're going to have to spread out that, you know, that usage to other people. You know, maybe Bellinger is an option, a cheap option we can look to. So for the 49ers side, um, we have CMC played 100% of the snaps in week two there. Uh, and then use check played 42%, about 24 snaps. None for Elijah Mitchell, uh, but they did mention they're going to get Elijah Mitchell involved. Not sure what that will mean. I'm assuming it'll still be at least a 70-30 split at minimum, if you know, if not closer to the 85-15 as we saw in week one there between CMC and Elijah. So maybe we could take a look at Elijah as an absolute dart throw, but don't love that. Wide receiver situation, Debo played 89%. Uh, Ayuk only played 53 because he hurt his shoulder. But before that, we can see you know, Debo, Debo and Ayu played about 90% of the snaps. And then Jawan Jennings was wide receiver three. He played about 32%. They mixed in a little bit of Ronnie Bell playing wide receiver and then Ray Ray McLeod. As obviously, with game two, Debo played, you know, basically 90% of the snaps. Ayu only played 30, 53 because of that shoulder. Uh, so Jawan Jennings' number really went up there, about 15% more. Same thing with Ronnie Bell. They played him a ton more. And it looks like Ray Ray McLeod still is kind of limited. So wide receiver one, if there is no Ayu, obviously it's Debo. And then wide receiver two, Juwan Jennings, wide receiver three, Ronnie Bell. And I'm sure Ray Ray McLeod would still get a little bit more involved than you know, only four snaps. Uh, tight end situation, uh, George Kittle played pretty much the whole game there that last game. And then they did put in Charlie Warner and then Ross Dwelly in a few snaps, but not much to mention there. So getting into this breakdown, starting off with the giant side here. Um, if you're going to be playing uh, Danny Dimes, he's one of those guys you can play in the captain spot just because he's not to do so much offensively. He has huge, huge rushing upside, as you can see. 13 for 43 in the first game, 9 for 59, and a touchdown in that second game. So one of those you know, few quarterbacks in the league where you can put him in the captain spot and you don't have to stack him with his teammates. 
just because of that rushing upside. So it's a very risky, risky strategy for tomorrow just because I'm assuming the 49ers defense is going to be massive chalk. And for good reason, the Giants have not looked good. Two straight games, they've been down by like three touchdowns or more to start off the game. And it's just, they've looked awful offensively. Now they don't have Saquon. They're going up against one of the best defenses in the league. A really, really good offense. You know, everything's stacked against them. Maybe, maybe the outcome that everyone's not thinking will happen, where the Giants go up, you know, it's a really close game, or the Giants blow them out. That could happen. You never know. You know, Brock Purdy has been great, but maybe he gets hurt. Maybe he just looks terrible. That could happen. Um, but, yeah, going back to Danny Dimes, solid captain play uh, if you want to get contrarian. But more so, I think right now I really like him in the flex just because, you know, he's enough rushing upside to be a safe option, even if he does not do well passing. So Danny Dimes, pretty solid play for tomorrow, uh, even against that tough, tough 49ers defense. Waller, one of my favorite plays across the board. Uh, as we saw, played not, about 90% of the snaps, was heavily involved. Eight targets, caught six for 76. So uh, he's going to be the number one option for the rest of the season in terms of just the wide receiver core for the Giants. So I love me some Darren Waller for tomorrow, uh, both captain play and as a flex play. Brita, uh, as we mentioned, or as I mentioned, went over, you know, he can get involved in the targets out of the backfield. He'll get some rushing attempts as well. It's it just one of those things I really think he just needs to fall into the end zone. Otherwise, he won't be worth it, and it's going to be super tough going against that defense. So right now, Breed is more of a stay away unless he's, his ownership's coming in at you know, pretty low owned. Hodgins, I think he's a solid play. You know, three targets, five targets, playing a decent amount of the snaps. Um, you know, like a, a big wide receiver. So, you know, he'll get red zone looks, but right now my favorite wide receiver would probably be Darius Slayton right here at 5,600. Or excuse me, not Darius Slayton, not my favorite. He's a solid option, five and six. He's more of like an intermediate to long, long ball wide receiver. And then Jordan Hyatt is kind of more just strictly long ball, like only catches like streaks, go routes, fades. As you can see, two targets, caught two for 89 yards. Uh, long was 58. So he's more of the boomer bust play, Hyatt there, as we can see in those, if we go back, if you scroll, you know, rewind back to the beginning, Hyatt's not playing a ton of snaps. So it's really hard to trust him at that price tag. So he'll probably be super low. So if you want to get contrarian, you can look to him, but I'd rather pay up for Slayton who is more of a safe option there. And he's kind of, he's more boom, he's boomer best, but he's a, he's a very, very safe option compared to Hyatt. Brightwell 5,000, as I mentioned, he'll get looks, you know, we'll have to wait and see kind of what the coach talk is tomorrow. Um, but yeah, he'll, he'll get carries tomorrow. Um, you know, we'll have to see what the split is. Hopefully we get some news about what the split will be like tomorrow. Uh, but if it's running back by committee, I, I think it's a solid option, a decent option off of Brita. As being a rookie, you know, maybe they won't play him as much. What to see? Favorite wide receiver right now for the Giants is going to be Paris Campbell. Uh, plays a good amount of the snaps. Um, everything is kind of more so within five yards of the line of scrimmage for him in terms of his targets. But he's a, a very uh, shifty guy. He's pretty fast. And so if he breaks one for a good amount of yards, you know, he's well worth it. So I just like the production. Four targets, six targets. They like to get him involved. So I think he's a solid option down there at 4,400 for the Giants side. Probably my favorite wide receiver right now. Graham Cano, always viable. Um, you know, if you think the Giants are not going to be able to score, obviously field goals are the next best option for them if they get within field goal range. Uh, so 4,000 for him, pretty solid. But if they get behind, but if they're down a few touchdowns, it could be one of those scenarios where they just keep going for it on fourth down and they don't kick a field goal. That's the only downside there with Graham Cano. John Steve will probably be like 2% owned. No one's going to play him. So if you want that one out of a million chance that they keep it close or they score a touchdown, I say go for it. But I just don't think it's worth it at all. And then we get down to the guys that only play a few snaps. You know, Shepard only played, boy, I think it was like 10 snaps or about 15% of the snaps. You can take a shot on him. It's, it's you know, showdown. All you need is for him to get that one huge catch with it for a touchdown or just get that small, you know, yardage catch for a touchdown. And that could be he can make it into the winning lineup. So never rule them out, even though they only play 5, 10, 15 snaps, because in a showdown slate, all you really need is points. You know, that's all you need. All you want is points, especially if it's touchdowns, and it doesn't really matter if they don't get a point the rest of the game. If they get that touchdown and it's you know, 10, 20 yards plus the catch, that's really, really solid. That's like 9, 10 points right there. So keep that in mind there for these cheap guys. Ballinger, I don't mind him. As we saw, he played 40% uh, of the snaps, I think it was. Uh, they do like to run double tight end sets. He's a, a solid pass catcher. Uh, you know, Waller will obviously be the main option. But if he's out there, 
I don't mind taking a shot. Use him as salary relief down there at 800 bucks. And that is it for the Giants side. For the San Francisco side, obviously it's going to be super, super popular to either put CMC in the captain spot or the 49ers defense. So if you want to get different, I'd say put in anyone else besides CMC in the 49ers defense in the captain spot, and you'll already start to be contrarian, very contrarian compared to the field because the field is just going to jam in CMC. They're going to jam in the 49ers defense because it makes sense, right? Like they're 5,800. The last time we saw a defense this much, uh, I think it was last year, and it did not work out. I think there was two times where one time it did work out where all the defensive people did get rewarded, and there's one time where it did not work out, and they all got uh, they all got what they deserved. But in this situation, it's very, very hard to trust the, the Giants' offense. They look god-awful. They have no Saquon. But as I said, in the back of your mind, maybe it's that one time where everyone's going to jam in the Giants or the 49ers' defense. They're going to be like 80% owned, if not more. and Maybe they look god awful. You know, maybe things happen where the Giants score three or four touchdowns. You you never know. And if that happens, and the 49ers don't get a bunch of sacks or interceptions or fumbles, or more importantly, a defensive touchdown, you're going to be screwed. 80% of the field will be screwed. So keep that in mind. Because that is the, I guess the biggest thing for tomorrow is how popular this 49ers defense will be. It'll be insane. But as I mentioned, CMC, um, I mean, if you're not going to play him in the captain spot, I'd say at least play him in the flex. I mean, he's just been a huge part of the offense. He's breaking off huge runs. He's always involved in the passing game on the backfield as well. So he's just an extremely safe option, thus why he's 13.2K. Brock Purdy, I think he's a solid option. I'm just not a Brock Purdy fan. He's just like a game manager. It's just the classic San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers quarterback. They're in there, and they just throw like 30 or less passes. They're just more so five, 10 yard passes, get them down the field, rely on the O-line and CMC. And that's it. So I think it's an okay play. I don't know if he has enough upside uh, for a, a captain play for me personally. You can definitely play him there, but I just don't think he has enough upside as a, a thrower to get there in a the captain spot. Um, so yeah, he's more of an okay play for me. I don't, I don't like going to him. Probably won't go to him. Uh, I'm not saying he's out of play, but that's just me personally. Debo, I really like him. I wouldn't mind getting to him there uh, if there's no Ayuk, especially in the captain spot. Now, if there is Ayuk, uh, they'll be solid. It should keep Debo's ownership uh, pretty low there. Um, so, yeah, I, I do like uh, Dave, Debo a good amount it, in the captain spot, 8,800, even in the flex. Ayuk, he's obviously the big question mark there. Um, if he's out, obviously it makes Debo Samuel more viable. It makes George Kittle more viable. It makes, you know, Juwan Jennings more viable. And um, who else we got down here? Ronnie Bell, uh, Ray, 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 Ray McLeod, you know, those guys will be viable. If, if there's Ayuk, you know, it's really just Samuel, Ayuk, and you can still get to Juwan Jennings. And then I just don't think there's a need to take a shot on Ray Ray and uh, Ronnie Bell, but you could if you wanted to. But let's just say Ayuk for right now does play. So if he, if he plays, I still really like Debo. should keep his ownership a little bit lower compared to if Ayuk was out. Um, but yeah, I think I'd just still prefer I or Debo over Ayuk just because of the targets. Um, and that's really it. My take there. I think they're both really, really solid plays. They're both really, really solid captain plays. George Kittle, uh, just hasn't looked good the first two games, but we know it's George Kittle. He's a fantastic tight end. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets heavily involved here. Um, they're not really force feeding him, you know, with Brock Purdy being the quarterback. I, I do remember it last year where it's like, George Kittle seems to be the odd man out in this offense with Brock Purdy at, court, Brock Purdy at quarterback. So hasn't had like any explosion games, but he still can. So I do like him as one of those people that you can throw in the captain spot because he does have enough upside. He is a good enough player to have an absolute monster of a game. So Kittle probably is up there as my favorite play as a captain play for the 49er side just because of how cheap he is and how much of a – he's pretty much like a boomer blast play pretty much. So I do like Kittle a good amount. Moving on to the 49ers defense, as I mentioned, uh, it's going to be hard not to play them, uh, you know, going up against this really, really poor Giants offense right now. But as I mentioned, if they don't get a defense a touchdown and they only put up, let's say, you know, 13 or five points, like you're going to get screwed um, if they don't get you that defense a touchdown and if they're going to be like 60% owned, if not more. So that's it really just comes down to the 49ers ownership. We'll get more of uh, that tomorrow, uh, hopefully before the game there, of kind of what it's looking like ownership wise. Juwan Jennings, right now, wide receiver three. Um, you can take a shot on him, 4,800, pretty expensive for wide receiver three who hasn't been involved heavily. But if Ayuk's out, 
Obviously, he becomes wide receiver two, and he becomes a pretty, pretty solid play there. Moody, I feel like he's a very safe option. Two straight games where he went three for three for field goal. I mean, they score a lot. They have a good offense. You know, he should be involved. Elijah Mitchell, uh, as I mentioned, he'll be involved. Was not involved last game, but they want to get him more involved. Obviously, how much more, we don't really know. But let's just say 15, 20 snaps, maybe he plays. Uh, so I think he's an okay option. There's a, a punt play as a flex. Duzak, I don't mind taking a shot on him. He's one of those guys where sometimes San Fran does get a little bit re- weird in the red zone. Maybe they throw him a ball that he catches. Maybe they, they do a, f- a fullback sneak. He can catch balls out of the backfield as well. Um, we've seen it before all of last year. He's a really good player. Uh, obviously, he was not involved the first two weeks, but once again, it's showdown. Anything can happen. And then, as I mentioned, if Ayuk is out, we can look to uh, Ronnie Bell as wide receiver three. Um, didn't do much there in the first two games. As you can see, no targets. And then Ray Ray McLeod, same thing. You know, only if Ayuk's out, we could take absolute dart throws on these two guys. But if Ayuk's in, I, I just don't think there's a need to. And that does it for the slate break time, guys. Hope you guys like it. Um, in terms of core plays, uh, obviously, I think you're going to have to throw CMC in there. And I do really like George Kittle here in the captain. So this is kind of the route I'm going to go for tomorrow's build. George Kittle captain as of right now. Darren Waller, CMC. Things will change depending on that Brandon Ayuk news. So. I'll keep you guys posted on Twitter there, so make sure you follow me on Twitter. Uh, But that's the video, guys. Hope you hit the like button. Really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the breakdown for the Sunday main slate. Peace.